Hey everyone, I am back with part two of Love is Strange, the Kate route, and it's Tuesday, and uh, we're in the diner. So, that's fun. <laughs> Let's get started. It's about ten in the morning by the time I get to the diner the next day. Oops. There's still a decent crowd, even though it's a little before lunch, before the lunch rush. Mostly the usual suspects enjoying a late breakfast, truckers, cops, and a few students like me. Joyce keeps a watchful eye over these particular patrons. She smiles at me, however, and I wave at her. There's no shortage of seats, so I idle by the door for a moment. Yesterday, Kate and I agreed to meet here so that we could discuss locations for the contest photo. I was a little hesitant to ask for her help at first. Kate seems to have a lot on her mind lately. She's been more shy than usual, rarely emerging from her dorm, dorm room except to go to class. I'm not sure what's going on, but I don't want to give her more stress than she already has. But seeing her face light up reassured me that I had made the right of choice in asking her. Maybe this will get her mind off of whatever's bothering her. Or at least make her laugh when I make an ass of myself and doing a shitty photo. Speak of the devil, or angel in this case, Kate enters the diner. She looks a little bewildered, but she smiles when she sees me beckoning or beckoning to stand next to me. Hi, Kate. Hey, Max. Sorry if I kept you waiting. I've actually never been here before, so I had to look up the bus schedule before I left. She may have kept me waiting all of three minutes, if that. It's not the first time I've had to wait on someone. Take Chloe, for example. Don't get me wrong, she's my best friend, but girl can't keep an appointment to save her life. Kate, on the other hand, is almost painfully considerate. Always putting other people first. I guess that's what makes me want to look out for her. The thought of someone as sweet as Kate losing her reasons to smile seems wrong. No worries. Is the booth okay? I gesture to one in the corner near the old jukebox. Kate nods and we both make our way over to it, sitting on opposite sides. Wow, does it always smell so good in here? She looks like she's literally in heaven from the smell of the delicious breakfast food being prepared. I can't help but smile as a reply. Yes, Joyce is an amazing cook. She'll take good care of you. A waitress shows up to take our drink orders, coffee for me and tea for Kate. She may be an early bird, but I need my caffeine fix. When the waitress comes back, I order my usual stack of pancakes, and Kate orders the same thing, apparently trusting my judgment. When Kate takes a sip of her tea, she practically melts into the cushion behind her. <laughs> Like she's truly relaxing for the first time in a while. I notice shadows under her eyes for the first time since we sat down and feel a pang of uneasiness in my stomach. She looks really tired. I can't help but wonder how she's doing. Should I say something about it? Mm -hmm. Well, we should ask. Are you feeling okay? No offense, but you look a little worn down. She seems surprised that I asked, but recovers almost immediately. I'm fine. I'm just a little stressed out with, you know, life in general. I'm not sure if she's, she's telling me everything, but I better not push her for now. She probably has her reasons. I hear that, but... Listen, if you need to talk about anything, I'm here, okay? I get another genuine smile out of her as she sips her tea again, the warmth of it putting some color back in her cheeks. Thanks, Max. I really do appreciate it. My food arrives and I immediately dig in, not realizing how hungry I had been until Joyce's famous pancakes are right under my nose. It looks like someone's hungry. 
I look from the half-eaten meal on my plate to Kate's, hardly touch in comparison. I can hear my mom chiding me from the, in the back of my head, but the grin on Kate's face it tells me she hardly minds. It's warm and glowing and makes me smile right back at her like a huge dork. Kate seems to have that effect on me. More than I thought, apparently. Kate just laughs. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't blame you. These are better than anything I've had at Black at the bot in the Blackwell cafeteria. <laughs> Make sure you pass it on to Joyce. I will if I see her before we leave, but she probably hears that kind of thing all the time. I shouldn't bother her. I reach across the table and nudge her hand gently with my own. You never bother, Kate. You've got to believe that. She looks at her hand and then back at me, grinning again. I'll try, Max. She smiles so much when we're alone together. Kate doesn't open up to a lot of people, preferring to keep to herself most of the time. I am one of the lucky ones that get to see the other side of Kate, her chatty, bubbly side. It makes me feel awesome. After I finish inhaling my breakfast and Kate goes about eating hers, I decide to bring up the, contrast, the contest entry. Alright, we don't have a lot of time, so we need to think of a game plan. Kate looks up from where she's been twirling her fork in the remnants of her pancakes, giving me her full attention instead. Right, what did you have in mind? Hmm... The location of the photo is going to be really important, so let's focus on that first. Do you have any... I stop, suddenly aware of Kate's eyes on me. Not focusing on my words, but on me in particular. What? Do I have something on my face? Kate laughs, breaking the tension in an instant. Yes, actually. You got a bit of... Here. She looks over the table between us and gently wipes the corner of my mouth with a napkin. She does it so naturally and gently that I barely have time to register what's, going, what's happening. Before I can react, she's seated again. There, that's better. Um, thanks. I touched the side of my mouth where Kate's hand had ghosted, feeling a slight heat in my cheeks. It felt... Really nice to get her attention. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, Max. Focus. The contest, remember? See, that's why I picked you to be my partner, Kate. I'd be all over the place without you. Yeah. About that. Kate's fingers... Kate's fingers cross her necklace subconsciously like there's something on her mind. What's up? Kate shrugs, looking away. Are you worried about the contest? It's not... it's not that. Her eyes snap back to mine. I'm not worried about you handling the contest, Max. I'm just not sure why you picked me to help you. What do you mean? I haven't been feeling myself lately. What if I slow you down or mess you up? I just don't think I'm as talented as you. If I screwed up your chances of winning, I'd feel awful. Wow, she's really beating herself up, herself up over this. Kate. Maybe, maybe you should pick someone else to help you instead of me. I won't have any hard feelings, I promise. There's no way I want anyone else to help me besides Kate. What could I say to reassure her? We can do it! I shake my head. Sorry, that's not gonna happen. But I picked you to help me because I thought we'd make a great team. I know how to set up a nice, sh nice shot, sure, but I have trouble bringing it to life. I've seen your art for those little children's comics you make. They're so vibrant. 
There's so much emotion in your work, it's incredible. Kate looked shocked, looking down again. Oh, Max, you're way too nice. I'm serious, Kate. You're an amazing artist. Just the kind of person I want working with me. So don't worry, okay? With you and my team, I know our entry is going to be great. I'm not a motivational speaker, but Kate actually looks hopeful after I say that. Okay, you're right. Go Team Max! I put my hand over hers and smile. You mean Team Max and Kate? <laughs> we finish our drinks and get ready to exit the diner. According to my phone, it's only been an hour since we sat down to breakfast, so there's still plenty of time left in the day. Where to now, Max? Do you have any ideas for a location? Um, let's have Kate decide. Hmm. Oh, follow me, Max. We're going on an adventure. After two wheels, we boarded the bus out of town where it pulled to a stop in front of a large white building. The hospital. I glanced around as we entered, taking in the atmosphere. It was nothing special on the inside. White walls, shiny linoleum, shining linoleum floors, people in scrubs darting in and out of patient rooms. Just an ordinary hospital. If it weren't for the television and the waiting room where the hushed voice of the receptionist taking calls to the front desk, the whole place would be eerily quiet. I look over at Kate, envious of her calm. Hospitals give me the creeps. What could possibly be worthy of a photo contest entry in a place like this? God, Kate, what are you doing? Kate leads the way, skipping the receptionist and heading straight to the elevator. She presses the button to go up and we wait for the elevator to descend. So, a uh, hospital, huh? Unlike Kate, who actually looks very sure of herself here, I am a little skeptical. I know what you're thinking, but, well, just trust, trust me. It'll make sense once you see where we're going. She must be able to sense my unease because after a pause, she turns to look at me. You do trust me, right, Max? <laughs> well, about that. Of course. No question, Kate's never steered me wrong before. Yes, of course I trust you. I'm just a little nervous. I haven't been to a hospital since. Okay, you're, you're gonna laugh. But when I was little, I chewed the eye off my teddy, off my teddy bear and I swallowed it. Kate's concern instantly melts away as she smiles. That's so cute. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that. You must have been so scared. I was. I just remember, like, doctors in white coats looming over me. Freaky. I shivered a little at the memory. To this day, I still can't watch medical dramas without getting creeped out. Before my mind can stray to any dark places, I feel fingers brushing gently against mine, making my heart skip, skip, my heart skips, my heart skips slightly. No doctors will get you this time, don't worry. Her voice, gentle and reassuring, makes me slightly less anxious. The elevator arrives and we step inside. Kate presses the floor button almost immediately like she's done this countless times before. The doors open and Kate gently beckons me forward with a nod of her head. She's buzzing with energy, looking around the wing in excitement. It's actually really adorable. Looking around, I don't blame her. Colors are splashed along the walls, completely contrasting the blank ones at the floor below. 
The main area is filled with plush chairs and bean bags. And there's a small table with chairs in the corner, littered with toys and, toys and coloring books. A children's wing? Mm-hmm. After scoping out the area, she turns back, turns back at me with a grin. Looks like there's no one around. Should we surprise them? She points to one of the rooms down a corridor. I shake my head. You go first. I'll wait out here. Oh, I skipped a line. I've never been that good around kids. Not like Kate. She's the natural mothering type. Kate bumps his shoulder slightly with her own as she walks past me to stand outside one of the rooms. They don't bite, you know. She flashes a, mischievi a mischievous grin and darts into the patient's room before I can retort. I don't mind. It's so nice having Kate in good spirits again. A moment later, I hear her talking in a soft voice and then a shriek of absolute delight. It doesn't take long for the other kids to catch on, a small crowd gathering outside the room Kate was in. They ambush her as, they, as she leaves the room, gathering around her legs and all bam babbling at her excitedly. Kate is all smiles and her usual shyness has gone completely as she listens and responds to each of the kids. A few of them turn towards me and I freeze. Kate smiles in my direction and looks down at the kids. That's my friend Max. She takes the prettiest pictures with her camera. <laughs> I flush and shake my head. I don't know about that. I mean, I can't meet Kate's kind green eyes right now, so mine dart around the room instead. There's a stack of coloring book pages on the little table, all filled in with crayon. Looks like I might have competition from these guys anyway. They seem to distract the attention off of me as the kids eagerly drag Kate up towards the table, wanting to show off their work. I hang back, seeking, seeking into one of the beanbag chairs to watch them some more, amazed at Kate's ability to handle them so well. Caring, patient, and attentive, she really knows how to listen to each of them individually. The kids eventually get caught up in showing more pictures, and Kate sinks down next to me. It's a big bean bag. It's a big bean bag, so I move over to make room for her. They're sweet, don't you think? I thought they'd give us some inspiration for a nice photo. I think so too. These kids are so innocent and sweet. It's nice to take a break from how harsh the world can be. A perfect subject for a photo. Kate looks happy, but I'm happy at my approval. They're the sweetest kids I know. I think letting them be stars of our photo is going to mean a lot of them. Mean to a lot of a lot to them. <laughs> Makes them feel important, you know. I nod sympathetically. They're all really young. It must be tough being away from their parents. After a beat, Kate says something else softly, looking at her hands instead of me. It means a lot to me, for sure. Kate's voice is full of sincerity and gratitude. Uh, well, it's all thanks to you, Kate. Don't give me the credit. It was your awesome idea. I'm just supplying the camera. She rolls her eyes. Well, that just makes us even more of a team. You wouldn't have a chance at winning without you. She looks at the kids again. But I don't think it's thanks to me at all. They're the ones who inspire me. They're so young, but still so brave. I owe them a lot, even if they don't realize it. Definitely, they really love you too. It's so cute. Looks like I made Kate blush this time. I know. Some of them don't get a lot of attention. Their parents are either rich and leave their kids care up to the nurses, 
are so busy working to provide for the rest of the families that they can't make it out here in person. So I try to keep them occupied. Kate, that's so awesome. You're like the cool big sister. Kate raises an eyebrow. Cool kids spend their time volunteering on the weekends? I'm not sure if some of our classmates would agree with you. I rolled my eyes just thinking about the cool kids at Blackwell. Jocks and narcissists like they're, that like to tear people down. Art school comes with its snobs, unfortunately. What I want to know is how is there like so many jocks at their school if it's an art school? Like they shouldn't like make fun of like the art kids if it's an art school, right? Like there shouldn't be like I don't know. It's really weird. Definitely, volunteering is totally punk rock, as Chloe would say. You really think so? There's a noticeable change in Kate's tone of voice, quiet and despondent, as she turns her attention to the kids instead of me. Is it because I, like, mentioned Chloe or something? Kate? Something is definitely bothering her. I sensed it back at the diner, but it feels even stronger now. We don't speak for a moment. I reach up to touch her shoulder gently, causing her to jump a little. Sorry, I zoned out. Hey, whatever is going on, I, I want to help. Kate sighs, looking at her hands. I don't know if you can. Let me try, at least. Oh my god. I keep skipping by accident. I know I don't always have the best ideas, but I don't want to see you hurting. This brings her attention back to me. I smile encouragingly. You trust me, don't you? I don't expect her to agree so quickly, but she does. I do trust you, Max. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, two different ways. I've been dealing with some really mean people recently. What? Who? Who would even be mean to Kate? It started with the Bible study I tried to start at Blackwell. I was just trying to make a safe space for discussion, but... Some kids didn't like it. First, someone wrote curse words in my room slate. Then Hayden and his friends started whispering about me in the halls. Then somebody made some awful drawings about me, of me. She doesn't explain further, and I don't want to make her. I'm already plenty furious. I don't get very angry this often, but when it comes to Kate... I feel like I have to protect her. Especially now when she's getting all ganged up on for no reason. Kate, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Better that you didn't. I'm probably just being too sensitive. No, you're not. Nobody deserves to be treated like that. Especially not Kate. Poor thing. Kate shrugs. Maybe... What can I do about it? I'm not strong like you, Max. Man, you gotta just stand up for yourself. You can't let them walk all over you like that. If you don't stand up for yourself, they're just going to keep going after you. That is not okay, so you've got to tell them to step off before it gets worse. Kay considers this looking a little intimidated at the notion. I know I should, but I just... You don't think you're strong enough, I know. But you're so kind to me and these kids. And even people who weren't nice to you. That makes you stronger than they could ever hope to be. That's so nice of you to say, Max. I just don't know if I believe it. I shake my head. You've got this, Kate. I have faith in you. Kate nods. You always have. So I'll try to do it. 
for you. Do it for yourself first. That's the most important thing. Kate actually beams at this and I get a, that warm, awesome feeling in my chest. You're a blessing, Max. Kate gets to her feet and takes a glance at the clock. I'm a little tired now that I got that off my chest. Would you mind heading back to Blackwell now? After I say goodbye to the kids, of course. Sure, whenever you're ready. Watching her light up as she talks to the kids again eases my worries. I just hope my advice helped her. <laughs>